Let's get one thing straight. Everyone wants nice arms. And knowing some of the best exercises can help you achieve your goal faster or with more success. My name is Adam and here at Science Based Fitness, I try to use my degree in exercise science and my over decade of personal training experience to help you guys better understand fitness concepts. In this video, we're going to break down a full bicep and tricep workout. And it's not just going to be random exercises thrown together, but rather a symphony of movements brought together with a scientific rationale behind each movement. And of course, like all of my content, I'll have links in the description for all of my sources and all the research I cite. With that being said, let's take a look at the key components that make these exercises good. First, muscle activation. We want to make sure the exercise we select is optimally targeting the desired muscle. This is where I turn to EMG data a lot. This is a measure of the amplitude of muscle contraction, and we can use this data to identify which exercises are stimulating the desired muscle the most. Next is time under tension. We want to make sure the exercise applies appropriate tension at the desired points. Since we know the length and portion of a lift is one of the most important components, an exercise like what you see here would be suboptimal. Next is our ability to load the exercise. An exercise like this is good, but if we choose a grip or an exercise that might limit our ability to push close to failure, it might keep us in a higher rep range, which might limit our ability to grow, hence not being as optimal. And next is our intensity. You don't always have to train to failure, but for anyone trying to achieve muscle growth, training closer to failure will yield better results. For muscle growth, I like to train one to two reps shy of failure. And I understand we all have different goals and we all have different fitness levels, so you don't have to necessarily train that way. So throughout this video, I'll show you my rep ranges, my set totals, and I'll let you guys apply this how it best fits you. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. We're jumping into triceps first, but we need to touch on this anatomy quick. The triceps have three heads. We have the lateral head, the medial head, and the long head. And when it comes to the lateral and the medial head, they act very similar, so we're gonna cluster them together. The long head's the biggest aspect of our triceps, and it's referred to as a biarticulating muscle, simply meaning that it just crosses over two joints, the elbow and the shoulder joint. And as we go through shoulder flexion, that long head experiences more of a stretch, and these are just some factors we have to look at when considering selecting an exercise. Exercise one is overhead cable extensions. You can see I'm on a cable machine here. All you'll have to do is take this to about belly button height. If you set this up too low, it's a little bit awkward to get into. You can do this exercise with dumbbells, but I prefer this on cables here because this provides more consistent tension throughout the range of motion. Having our shoulders elevated in this position will put more of a stretch on the long head of the tricep and our ability to load this exercise is decent. My rep range is gonna look like eight to 12 reps, stopping one to two reps shy of failure, for either three or four sets. Now we're gonna transition over to biceps. And first again, we need to take a quick look at the anatomy. Now the biceps have two heads. The heads of the bicep are the short head and then the long head. And that long head makes up the peak of the bicep when flexed. And there's a muscle that's deep or below the bicep's brachii, and that's the brachialis. The brachialis helps prop up the bicep and gives you a little bit of a larger look. And surprisingly, the brachialis actually produces the majority of the force during a standard bicep curl. Not that it's super important, but it's kind of an interesting fact, at least I thought it was. We also have the brachioradialis, which aids in elbow flexion and supination, which is the rotation of our hand. And when it comes to biceps, we'll pay a little bit more attention to our hand positions. And this is why. If you take a look at my bicep, when my hand is supinated. You can see the peak of that bicep here, but as I rotate my hand to a neutral grip, you can see that peak change. Modifying our grips in a lot of these different exercises can allow us to have more of an emphasize on different heads of the bicep. Although if we look at triceps here, when I rotate my hand, there's little to no change. The grip when it comes to tricep exercises are more important when it comes to your ability to load that exercise or to get a full range of motion. So our first bicep exercise here is a straight bar cable curl. We'll adjust the cable down to about one to two clicks from the bottom on the cable machine, take one to two steps back, and hit a pretty standard bicep curl. The beauty of this exercise is that it pulls our arm into a stretched position, which allows us to target the long head of the bicep a little bit more. This exercise is pretty high when it comes to the EMG data for muscle activation. It provides a good stretch at the bottom of the exercise while that bicep's in the lengthened position. It's an easy exercise to load, has a quality stimulus, and hits that desired muscle. Again, I'm hitting an eight to 12 rep range with one to two reps shy of failure. 
four, three, or four sets. Now back to triceps. We're gonna look at dips here. Depending on your fitness level, you might have to use an assisted dip machine or maybe some bands, whatever works best for you. Dips have some of the highest EMG activation and allows us to maximize load while in that stretch position. Now, I'm not a stickler for dip form. I have these really nice attachments on my power cage here. And as you see, I can lean slightly forward and this decreases this angle right here which means that my arm has to travel through a larger range of motion. Now I'm hitting the same idea with eight to 12 reps. Sometimes as fatigue sets in, I get a few less, but as long as we're pushing one to two reps shy of failure. Now back to biceps, we're looking at the Beijing curl. Now this can be trained a few different ways. I like to lower the cable handles down to the bottom, one to two clicks from that bottom, but you'll have to adjust this depending on your height and the angle you wanna train at. Now this emphasizes the long head of the bicep a little bit more and puts us in a good stretch position. Using cables like this versus dumbbells allows us to get more tension at the bottom of the lift while that biceps in that lengthened position. Now, as I do this, you can see that I'm leaning slightly forward. This is how I've seen this exercise be taught. And the idea is that it allows you to focus on that contraction a little bit more. If you wanna stand still, that's totally fine. As long as you're feeling a quality stimulus to that bicep. Again, eight to 12 reps, one to two reps shy of failure, four, three or four sets. Got it, good, moving on. Back to triceps. In this exercise, we're looking at a crossover cable extension. Cro cable crossover extension kickback thing. You can call it whatever you want, honestly. This exercise, I raised the cable machine to about my shoulder height, and you could use different angles on this. I don't have an attachment on here. I'm gonna cross my hands over it and step back with this. Hitting a tricep extension as my arms come across my body allows us to travel the full range of motion, getting a quality stretch throughout, and allows us to train what we call unilaterally or essentially just one side at a time or independently. So if you have any weaknesses or imbalances, the opposite arm can't pick up that slack. This is a good way to help fix those instabilities. Now this is a tough one, so you'll have to go light to start out, but I love this one. It gets a really deep burn on those triceps. This one, you could be limited by your ability to load. Again, eight to 12 reps, one to two reps shy of failure, three to four sets. Back to biceps and we're gonna have an incline bicep curl. We're gonna be on a bench leaning back like we're gonna do an incline chest press. My angle's a little bit more steep than what I would do a chest press on. And you can see I'm rotating my hands as I curl. This involves our brachioradialis, which is that forearm muscle that helps with elbow flexion and supination. And you can see this exercise here gets a nice quality stretch. And I make sure I emphasize control through the eccentric and concentric portion of the lifts. This is another exercise that's gonna get a deep burn, but don't go too heavy to start out. Use an appropriate load, and I recommend starting out light since you are in an awkwardly stretched position. Again, shooting eight to 12 reps, one to two reps shy of failure, three to four sets. All right, into our last two pairings of exercises. The next tricep exercise is a standard tricep extension with a rope grip. There's nothing inherently special about this exercise. It works, that's why it's on this list. That rope grip seems to show slightly higher EMG activation than the straight bar. And I think that mostly has to do with the comfort in the wrist positioning on a rope versus a straight bar. It puts that muscle in a stretch position while under load. And overall is a very easy exercise. On this movement, I have the cable set to the top. I load an appropriate weight, keep my elbows pinned at my side and rep this out. Again, same rep range, same intensity, same sets. Moving on to biceps, again, we're not overcomplicating this with a hammer curl. The hammer curl will put more of an emphasis on the long head of the bicep. It's an easy movement to load and provides a quality stimulus to the biceps. You'll notice you might be able to lift more on this exercise. So choose an appropriate load. Again, same rep range, same intensity, same set total. I wanna give you guys a quick example on how I set this up throughout a week. Let's say Monday is gonna be a strict arm day. I might not hit all four of these exercises. I might only hit three for biceps, three for triceps, and hit a total of four sets for each. That's a total of 12 sets. 12 sets is an appropriate number for your total weekly volume, but I'd like to hit a little bit more than that. So what I'll do is say on Thursday, I'll hit a few more sets. Let's say I select two exercises and I hit three sets on both. Now this is a total of 18 sets of weekly volume. It allows me to increase my volume by adding that second day, but I might find myself not training as intense on that second day. So just apply this appropriately 
to how it best fits you and how you can best recover. I hope you guys found some value in this video. If you did, consider hitting that like button, consider subscribing to the channel. YouTube thinks this video up here is going to be your favorite of my content. And if you guys did enjoy this video and you wanna see more videos like this on different muscle groups, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to that. Hope you guys have a good day and we'll see you in the next one.